Hi, this is Mingyao from Ozone Engineering, and in this video I'll be setting up a harmonic uh, frequencies analysis. This means I'm going to try to model a guitar string, we're going to pluck it, and see all the harmonics that's generated when we do that pluck. Um, so so to, do a, to model start a guitar string appropriately, we need to start with a static structural analysis. This allows us to put in the tension in the string. Then we're going to do a modal analysis to model the natural frequencies. And finally, we're going to perform a transient structural analysis to look at what the plucking does to the, to the simulation, to the um, vibration of the string. So a number of different steps, but let's get started. OK, here we have answer space claim. I'm going to draw a simple line in here, and um, I'm going to make this a, a 21 inch uh, line, and then we will assign, prepare, turn this into, um, create a profile, and create the string as that profile. So now we have a, now we have a beam element here. So it will be a su super simple simulation. There's uh, one beam here with a beam profile of a circle. So let's go back to Workbench and set this up. Okay, so you can see I have a static structural analysis followed by a modal, followed by a transient. Well, let's work our way down. So this material here by default is static uh, structural steel. And um, for a guitar string, uh, sometimes it looks like they're they may be made of brass, so I'm going to just select a brass or maybe a, uh, a bronze. I'll, but let's go with the brass for now. We can adjust the cross section of the circle. Uh, Ten millimeters is way too thick for a guitar string, so maybe it's less than um, it's 0 0.0127 millimeters in radius. So you can adjust this as needed. And uh, we can specify exactly how many elements we want on, on this uh, guitar string. Let's generate a mesh and see. So this is pretty sparse. It's uh, t in 21 sections. We can, uh, since these models are so simple, we can afford to go a little bit more refined on this. Okay, so now we have about 100 elements across this. So let's set up the simulation here. We have uh, two ends that are fixed. Fix support, and uh, we're going to assign a bolt pretension to the string itself. Uh, the way the bolt pretension works is we're going to cut that string, pull it together, and then uh, to put the stress on, then stitch it back. Uh, to do this accurately, properly, we need to have two steps. So in the first step, we're going to load this with 10 newtons of force. And in the second step, we're going to lock in, in place. So let's check out what that looks like. So we have a deformation. Um, you can see it's fixed on either side and it's getting pulled in towards each other. But we're mostly interested in the, the stress. Beam result, shear forces, uh, axial force. And this should be uniformly 10 newtons of force. Uh, the modal analysis is going to pick up the support as well as the, as the stiffness of the, uh, as well as the stress of, stress induced stiffness of the static structural analysis. It's going to pick up the first six modes, and all we have to do is solve it. Okay, so the first uh, resonant frequency is 141 hertz. We can take a look at all of the 
simulation results here to see how this part is bending. Okay. So let's remember this is a 141 hertz as the first resonant frequency. If I reduce that tension to one newton, and we don't have to, we can just go ahead and solve the modal one. The simulation depends on the results of static structural analysis, so it's going to resolve this one, and then the results will be get get passed to my modal simulation. So you can see we've gone from 140 to 40 hertz. Uh, let's crank up the force again. And that shows you that the uh, pretension in the string matters quite a bit. So let's go back to 10 newtons as our load. And uh, run this again. Get back to our 140 hertz. make sure we have the frequencies we want. Now we're going to actually plug the string. So here is, uh, we have to do a little bit of thinking. Um, the first thing we want to figure out is how long we want to run the simulation for. If we look at the frequencies <coughs> and we plug the string, we expect it to, to vibrate at 141 hertz. Um, we want to look at a few of the harmonics, so there will be another set of harmonics at 280 and another set at um, you know, 4, 420 or so. So if it's at 420 hertz and we want at least, let's, let's say 20 time steps in that 420 hertz, so I'm going to be at 1 divided by 420 divided by 20. So this should be our time step. Let's put that in. Uh, just say y e minus four. Okay. And uh, if we and we don't want to simulate this whole thing for a whole second, uh, so the, t the time step at y e to the minus four will allow us resolution of maybe ten uh, ten thousands maximum, uh, which I think is fine. Um, we're going to be doing a a fast Fourier transform after this, and that requires increments of uh, uh, of like powers of two. So that's the number of time steps we, we want. So we want want to multiply this by uh, we want to multiply this number by let's say two to the power of eleven. Let's say right. So two hundred two thousand four hundred and eight. So we want to multiply it by that. So this is our actual time we want to end it at. Actually, we, I should have just done one. So z, uh, zero, 0 0.0001 times 2048. So that's exactly the end time we want. So 0 0.2048. Okay. So we'll, we'll generate a whole bunch of data for this and then do a FFT of it and that should give us some good results to, in terms of looking for uh, separate harmonics. Now we're going to plug it. So the, the support here is already defined. So if I go to my environment, you can see that support is all grayed out. We can add forces to it. So we're going to add force on this in the, let's say the Z direction. Z direction. And uh, Let's, let's just plug it, so maybe 5 newtons of force. Maybe that's a little bit too much. Let's, let's do 2 newtons of force here. Just a very light plug. And we want this to last uh, 2 e minus 4. And then at th 3 e minus 4, we set this to 0. And then we just let it vibrate. Uh, Ansys has the option of adding damping, so we're going to not do any damping right now. There's a little bit of numerical damping, but we can, uh, we can potentially put in some light damping ratio. Let's 
put a little tiny bit of damping in. And that should be good. So let's go ahead and run the simulation. So this should give me 2,000 points of data. And because it's a modal superposition uh, transient analysis, it should be pretty accurate. Okay, so here let's uh, plot the total deformation of this over time. We can see the vibration, and if we set this to just in the z axis, and I can let's hide the minimum and the average, just look at the maximum. Looks like pretty, pretty straightforward sine loops. Um, let's go ahead and do a FFT of this in Excel. So we're going to copy this line, this will be our time, uh, this line, this is our deformation, and um, FFT, uh, there's, an, there, there's an option for, for data of uh, data analysis tools. So if you don't have this, there's five file options that lets you add in data analysis tools. We can do a Fourier analysis, input range, so that'll be this one. And output range, I'll put it here. Okay, so it calculates the FFT of this. Um, we want to create an index of this, so let's copy and paste. So that, that's the FFT. Now we're going to figure out the, the frequency associated with this. So then the, the frequency is equal to this divided by uh, the final time, how long the entire data set is. So let's uh, put some dollar signs in there. So our first frequency is 4 hertz and We got all of this data, um, and we want kind of the in the 100 hertz range to see what the frequencies are. And finally, now we, we want the um, uh, magnitude. So this is equal to uh, imaginary uh, absolute value of imaginary numbers. Like this. And we paste this in. Okay, so what we want is uh, it's kind of the, the ones in the middle. Uh, but let, let's go ahead and plot maybe up to like a thousand hertz. Because we don't really care about things that are too high in frequency. But maybe this is a good range. So if we go insert a chart. Right, you can see very clearly we have the first peak at 146, which if we go back to our analysis, is pretty close. Uh, we, do, we, we don't have the data to, to grab every single uh, frequency, but there's one at 146, one at 288, and then a couple more harmonics as we go. And that shows you how we can set up a harmonic frequency analysis. So we, we plug the string. We figure out what it's going to sound like with all of the harmonics. Um, and that came from first doing a 
a uh, bolt pretension or a pre-stressed modal analysis. So we first calculate the stresses inside of the strain. Then we do a modal analysis to look at what the resonant frequencies are. Then we plucked it uh, using almost like a little short impulse function. And we track the deformation of the string. It vibrates like this. And uh, from that data, we're able to characterize and, and get the frequency response of this in the transient simulation. Uh, hopefully that was interesting to you. It certainly was interesting to me. So um, thank you for your time. If you're interested in this type of video, please uh, subscribe to our channel. Uh, and if you are interested in this type of analysis, contact us at ozeninc.com. Thank you and have a good day.